Hello, folks. So tonight, I am going after M81. I did this last year, but I want to try it again and try and pull off some better colors this time. Because now, I'm using the L Pro, which should improve the orange and yellow. And I'm not putting a light pollution filter in front of the RGB filter. So we'll see how this one comes out compared to last year. Although maybe last year I just didn't process it right and I got weird colors. You never know. But anyway, um, I'm doing 30 second exposures. Um, let's see here. My gain is 75, offset 15. Right now the mean readout is 1447. You know, I'm still battling my neighbor's lights out there, but it is what it is. Um, but I, I think I can get by with that. And let's take a look at one raw image here. Well, there's the bright core of M81. Um, I'm sure there's. I'm going to be picking up lots of data here. We'll have to see. <laughs> I hope so. Um, and uh, there's a big uh, dust speck, dust bunny, whatever you want to call them, right there. I wish... I had done a better job of cleaning my imaging train out um, when I recently removed the reducer and put on the Hotet flattener. I have a feeling that that dust speck is, is so big because it's probably sitting on the flattener. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure my flats will do the job and get rid of that. And uh, let, let's take a look at uh, the, the, the guiding here. The guiding looked great earlier. <clears throat> There's a dither in there. Let's clear this out. Now, pointing north, that's in the direction of my best guiding. 0 0.28, 0 0.29. Absolutely the best I've seen it in a long time. It's almost shocking, in fact. But it is really clear out there tonight. I don't know if that's playing a, a, a big part. Wow. Wow. Let's do this for once, since it's so good. Everybody complains that I have the scale too big. Let's put it at four. <laughs> Make people happy for once. See, I got the little bumps now. <laughs> they still drive me crazy, though. All right. Well, we'll see how this goes. I'll, I'll be back. Okay, I have finished my third galaxy of the season. I don't feel like a galaxy deadbeat anymore. For a while, it seemed like I was never going to get anything done, but now I've finished M81, and let me show you what I've got here. So this is becoming the year of me combining data with years past, since I've already captured M81 before. So um, I combined this year with last year. I actually I actually haven't added up all of the, the hours yet. I'll I'll post that at the end of the video. For now, I just want to show you what I've got. And this is what happened with my, I'm calling it Loom, but really it's it's L Pro data this year plus Loom and CLS data from last year. And after I combined all of the data, that's what it looked like, which is similar to the way I, um, I think it was a Sombrero Galaxy looked last year. and. Did I combine the Whirlpool Galaxy too? I can't even remember. I think I did that one too because um, my rotation was one way last year and a different way this year, but it doesn't matter. I've got easily enough room to have fit M81 in there. And this is how my Loom data looks. And so this is the combination of this year and last year. And this is my red data. And let me show you, I did something different this time. Um, this is my red data with the DBE, and this is how it looked before the DBE. Oh, my mouse is moving kind of slow. <sighs> Sorry, I'm blowing on the mouse trying to clear the dust. Okay, that's better. So on the one on the left is before the DBE, and the one on the right is with the DBE. I tried something different. Normally, I've, I've combined the, the RGB data without doing any background extraction, and then I would do a background extraction on the combined data. So I wanted to see what happens if I um, do a, a background extraction on the RGB data on the individual filters before I do the combine. And the result was 
it, it turned out the same. <laughs> uh, nothing really changed, so I don't know if I'm going to, in the future, I'll probably just not worry about doing a, a DBE on the individual filters. I'll just do one on the, the combined data. It, it, just to save time, it didn't make a difference. And this is what my green data looks like. And that's what the blue data looks like. It's hard to tell the difference. Um, but look at, I want to show you something. This happens every time with my blue data. Look at the blue data, the, the stars, especially well, I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see, but uh, this one here, look at how bloated that star is in blue compared to the, um, what was that, the green. It happens every time when the stars are big, blue just is always bloated. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's with astronomic or something else going on with blue. And I drizzled everything. So, all right, so that's how the data looks like. Now, this is what the data looked like when I combined the RGB. And not a whole lot of color going on with this RGB data. That happens to me every time. I'm not, I'm not an expert doing broadband. I don't have a lot of experience with it. And with my light pollution, I, I shy away from it. But, you know, we're in galaxy season now. So, you know, when in Rome... Um, I, I need to get these galaxies done as much as it, I think it's it's difficult for me, and um, and I'm out of practice. I I admit it, but that's what the RGB looks like, and I still ended up doing a DBE, even though I did a a DBE on the individual filters. But it did help with some of the gradients, not much, but it, it helped, and uh, that's what that looks like, and. I tried a color calibration with that, that, I keep forgetting what they call it, the, the photometry, the photometric, whatever that new feature is in, in PixInsight. Well, it's not that new of a feature. I, I think it was introduced a year ago or even longer. And it, it didn't work. I was getting um, a plate solve error on it. And some, that thing is about 50-50 for me when it decides it wants to work. And it didn't work this time. So I did a manual color calibration. And it, it didn't make that big of a difference, but... After I did it, I did see more color in the core of the galaxy. And it looks like it's orange-yellow, orange which is nice to see because this is what I was missing last year. Um, last year, I had a CLS filter in front of my RGB data. And I was warned about that, that I, I, I would be missing um, orange and yellow data if I continue to do that. And it turns out uh, this year without a light pollution filter in front of my RGB, I am noticing I'm getting that orange and yellow back. So that's something to keep in mind if you're using a CLS filter in front of all of your, a two-inch CLS filter in front of all of your, your other filters, you may be missing something because it is cutting out a lot of the spectrum. At the, you know, it's saving you light pollution, but it's it's blocking a little bit too much. So I have nothing in front of my RGB, and I'm using an L-Pro um, filter in place of my um, Luminous filter. So, anyway, so that's that. And that's after the color calibration. Let's see, what did I do next? Um, well, I, I made everything uh, um, nonlinear, and this looks like uh, this next one is me, is after I added the Luminous data to it. So you can see the galaxy is is much more um, uh, full now. It's it's got a, a, a lot more detail in it, more bright. And there's uh, let's see, is there less noise going on in the background? A little bit less noise, but I uh, I do have a lot of gradients going on still. And um, gosh, did I do? I may not have all of the steps here, but um, I may have done. Um, another DBE. I can't remember because I, I do so many things and I try to keep track of all this, but it's a lot of willy-nilly, you know, try this, try that. I'm, I'm not a good source for broadband, so don't, don't come to me for help. <laughs> but um, let me show you what I've got here next. I did a sharpen and um, a denoise, and I might have run that SCNR, um, this command right here, to get rid of the green in the background. So that's why it, it turned a, a little bit maroonish, um, reddish in the background, just to get rid of that green. So, uh, this, so this is the sharpen, the denoise, and uh, SCNR on the left there. And what did I do next here? And um, I did uh, darken the background. 
and that's when it's starting to take shape. I, 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 I think I definitely uh, worked on some colors here. I might have worked on some colors on this one as well. Oh, no, I don't think I did. I might have darkened the background and pumped up the saturation in this one. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to remember because I actually went through this whole thing twice, and I might have taken different steps for each way because I'll show you what happened the first time I went through it. So this is what happened with uh, the darkened background. Um, that's how that looks. Now, my first pass through this, this is what my final image looked like. And I was, at first, I was happy with it. And I marked it M81 best because I had about <laughs> 14 other versions going on too. And this is the one I had labeled best. And I'm thinking, I can't upload this. To me, it, it, it looks like a hot mess. The, the, the background is blurry. The, the galaxy doesn't look crisp. I was I was hacking away at stars that I thought were too bloated instead of just, you know, just leave them as they are. They look better bloated than when I'm trying to fix them and, and, and clone stamp fixes in. So that, that was my first cut. And I thought, okay, I'm starting all over again. And then this is my next version. And this is the one I deemed best. And I don't know how, if you can see the difference in, in, in the video. But if you, if you can see the one on the left, the, the background looks blurry. I, I still have gradient issues going on in the background. While the one on the, the right, to me, looks much more crisp. I like the, the background. The, the color on the background is a little bit more darker. I, it's a little less saturated. The galaxy looks more crisp. So I'm glad I went back to redo it. it. It's To me, the difference is not even close. I'm not embarrassed to post this one. And um, maybe the galaxy, the color... See, this is the orange and yellow. I was completely missing this last year. Um, and I, I didn't really even have to fake it this year by trying to Photoshop in right, the right colors. All I had to do was pump up the saturation and that color popped right out. So that's, that's not bad. Let me show you what I've done in years past here. Hang on a second. So what do you guys think? The one on the left is from last year compared to the one on the right. And um, I think they look very similar except for the core, of course, that I was talking about with the one on the right. Otherwise, um, it's, it's very close. Um, I might have a little bit better star color than the one on the right. But otherwise, I rotated it. That's why it looks like this. So they're almost the same rotation here. So, hmm. I think I improved a little bit over last year. Um, a little bit. I mean, definitely I improved in the core area. And I think the background looks a little, a little bit cleaner on the right. It's close. It's a, it's a lot closer than I think than I thought. So, it's probably closer than I thought because I don't have a lot of experience with RGB anyway. Um, okay, the, the one from last year really is not as bad as I thought it, it, was, it was. And now let me show you my one from, I think this is from 2016. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, this, this is a train wreck. And I don't even know if I noticed how bad the background was. Look at this stuff going on. Back then, I, I don't think I even cared. But that's how M81 looked like when I... This is the first time I ever captured it. The stars, of course, are blown out. There's... Eh, it's not even worth talking about. It's more just something to laugh at. <laughs> so, yeah, but I got two galaxies. I, was, I thought that was so cool back then. So, anyway... Um, so stick around. I want to show you, um, my, uh, my solar work that I've been doing over the past week on that big sunspot that's been lingering around. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in, folks. I'll see you later.